Throughout the history of armed conflict, people have demonstrated a remarkable ingenuity for devising new methods of killing one another. If anything, this process is accelerating. New technologies involving telecommunications and robotics present new problems for IHA. In this video, we'll briefly examine three new types of weapons and consider the legal position under IHA, namely unmanned aerial vehicles, automated weapon systems, and cyber warfare. The first new means of warfare we'll examine is unmanned aerial vehicles, commonly referred to as drones. Drones were first employed in Yemen in 2002. They've now been used in numerous theaters of warfare. From the perspective of targeting, drones do not really pose any particular issues. They are still subject to the DPP principles, distinction, proportionality and precaution. However, as we have discussed already, the use of drones is highly controversial in other respects, notably concerning the geographical scope of the law of armed conflict, as discussed in a previous chapter of this book. Automated or autonomous weapons systems are rather more challenging from the perspective of targeting. At present, the distinction between automated and autonomous is not clearly defined under IHA. According to UK military manuals, automated weapon systems are constrained by algorithms that determine their responses by imposing rules of engagement and setting missions parameters which limit their ability to act independently. We can see clearly that there is no ongoing remote control over the weapons systems. Instead, either the parameters for attack or the specific mission are programmed into the weapons system in advance. However, in addition to this automated attack technology, fully autonomous systems are being developed. Fully autonomous systems are able to interpret their environments and decide from a range of possible means of attack. There is no hard and fast distinction, but the less human input is required, the more likely a weapon is to be regarded as autonomous. Both autonomous and automated weapons are subject to the normal rules of targeting. However, as you know, IHL places attackers under robust restrictions regarding targeting, including the principles of distinction, proportionality, and precaution. Given that these principles require a complex decision, it is not likely that fully autonomous systems will be able to comply with obligations under IHL anytime soon. As such, they should be considered illegal until they can be demonstrated to be able to operate within the margin of discretion afforded to attackers under IHL. The third category of new methods of warfare is cyber warfare. Modern telecommunications have permeated even the most mundane of technologies. While this is very convenient for us on a day-to-day -day basis, it also renders them vulnerable to cyber attack. It is difficult to comprehend the damage that would be caused by a major cyber attack on a modern complex city. The attack could affect hospitals, financial systems, utilities including gas and electricity, transport control such as rail connection and traffic lights, as well as military hardware. One of the major difficulties when conceptualizing cyber attack in IHL is the issue of damage. Is it possible to say that any attack occurred if no actual damage was done? For instance, 
if a stock exchange was targeted or private data was stolen and disseminated, does this count as an attack? According to the Tallinn Manual, a cyber attack should be counted as an attack for the purposes of IHL, provided that by design or use, they are capable of causing either injury to or death of persons, or damage to or destruction of objects. It should be noted that the damage of objects also includes damage to information technology systems. Cyber attacks can have many orders of effects. Indeed, they can have effects far greater than anticipated by their creators. In one notorious incident, computers controlling the Iranian nuclear reactor were infected with the so-called Stuxnet virus. However, the effects of the virus spread far beyond the nuclear program and ended up infecting a huge range of devices around the globe. As this episode demonstrates, it can be extremely difficult to employ cyber weapons within the rules of IHL targeting. If the attacker is unable to control the spread of the virus, then there are clearly serious problems with the principles of distinction and proportionality.